Interesting. Hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee. A few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy while having your coffee. Well, we're continuing with the Ask Andrew series. Uh, let's see what questions we've got in uh, this week. Um, ah, we got one from uh, Sandy, Sandy Gravel, and she's asking, what are the different types of retaining wall? That's a nice follow on from the, the previous episode. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Sandy. Uh, let's go straight over to the flip chart, Brian, and uh, let's uh, see what the different types of retaining wall are. Now, if you'll remember, last time uh, we looked at what a retaining wall is and how it works. Now we're going to look at the, the different types and how they work. So if you remember, we have a ground surface up here, and then we want to create a vertical uh, cut or slope and then we have a lower level down here. So the retaining wall needs to support horizontal pressures in the soil to prevent collapse of that material. So there are different ways that retaining walls do that. Let's look at uh, the most basic, but also very common, which is a gravity wall. As the name suggests, it's a big, mass of some kind, usually masonry or concrete or anything heavy and hard wearing uh, that you can construct. Uh, depending on the type of soil, you, you'll probably need to uh, cut back a bit on the slope in order to construct it and then backfill. But when it's constructed, the soil applies a horizontal pressure to the wall and from its own mass, uh, it won't move. You've got enough weight there so you have friction on the base so it won't slide forward it won't overturn and the material uh, is strong enough not to break uh, inside it as well. So that is the gravity wall. Advantages, it's easy, cheap to construct, uh, can look quite nice if uh, made from masonry or given a nice uh, facing. Uh, disadvantages, are if there's a restriction on height you can go up to about maybe four meters, something like that, around that area, any more, and then the wall has to become so big that it takes up too much space. It already takes up quite a bit of space, uh, but you can't go uh, any higher for that reason. Uh, this soil needs to be strong enough to support the weight of that. Um, that is also uh, one disadvantage of the gravity wall. Let's go on to the next one. Let's draw this with a dash line. You'll see why in just a moment. Uh, here, this type of wall takes up less space, it's just that thin stem, it's a reinforced concrete uh, uh, wall. Um, so to construct it you need to cut back because the, wall, the stem of the wall is supported by quite a big uh, reinforced concrete base. There are different shapes here, it could just be an L like that or often it extends a bit uh, in front as well. So that's the full shape of it. So when you construct it, uh, you need to uh, cut the slope back to here if there is an existing slope. Then you backfill in here and that creates your ground surface there. And then you have your ground level, could be here or a bit higher, in front of the wall like that. So the horizontal pressure from the soil is resisted by, instead of uh, self-weight, it's actually resisted like a, a piece of structure. It's a cantilever, so it's a reinforced concrete cantilever. If the soil pushes forward like that, it resists it by bending, but of course it needs to be supported at its root in rotation. So that's what the long base is for. That resists the, uh, the bending moment at the root of the stem through the self weight of the soil. So it's quite clever the design in that way. The same soil that applies the horizontal pressure is also applying its vertical weight on the base to prevent rotation. There's also some bearing resistance, particularly at the front of the wall from the soil here. That also helps to stop rotation. Um, so advantages of this type is it doesn't take up much space. It's much thinner than the gravity wall but you need quite a lot of space for construction. You need to come right back here. But 
When it's finished, if you were standing here, all you see is just that face there, and just the, if you're up here, you just see a thin little uh, stem. Uh, so it's quite neat, doesn't take up much space, but you don't see what's uh, really happening in the wall and how it's working because you can't see all this base under here. So, um, so it's pretty good against overturning because of the weight of the source. It's acting in a similar way to the gravity wall. It is a bit more prone to uh, sliding failure because there's not as much mass as there is with the gravity wall. So to help that, during design, what you can do is design in what's called a key. It's a little vertical element of the reinforced concrete uh, structure that comes down here. Then you get the additional pressure here. It's set back a little bit from the front in case somebody excavates a ditch here for services or other reason. So that's why we, we set it back a bit. So you're not going to lose that uh, resistance there. Again, you're restricted in height like this one, maybe to around about five, possibly six meters, because as this gets higher and higher, this concrete needs to get thicker and thicker and the base needs to get bigger and everything gets just too big and impractical. So that is called the reinforced concrete cantilever wall because of this main piece, which acts as a cantilever here. Okay. That's two down. Now, both of those types, uh, they're not very good in, uh, in, in situ ground where you don't have a fill material. So that happens in a basement. Uh, so let's imagine that you have a building here. Uh, you're going to construct a, a basement here next to these um, existing buildings. So this happens a lot in built up areas. To increase the value of a site, you want to uh, increase the floor area by constructing a basement. You want to go as far as possible to the site boundary to maximize the value of the site. How are you going to get a retaining wall in here before you excavate? Because you must put in the retaining wall before you excavate, otherwise this soil and the buildings will collapse into the basement. So those previous types of wall won't do you need to put in the wall at the start and it goes below your excavation level. For that reason it's called an embedded wall. There are different ways of installing this. It can be with a line of piles, diaphragm walls, sheet piles uh, and so on. So you install the wall first then you can excavate uh, out the material. This is much more expensive of course, much more specialized construction methods. The design is also quite uh, difficult uh, because you need to check for movement. It's not just an ultimate limit state design. The serviceability limit state is very important. You need to check that there's not too much movement so that these existing buildings uh, don't suffer any damage. Um, now, it can act as a cantilever, as an embedded cantilever wall to a certain depth, maybe to about four or five meters, depending on the, the strength of the soil. Uh, then it gets all its resistance from the soil here. You get passive resistance, which holds the, the wall. So the wall will bend a little bit because of the pressure behind it, but it will be held by the soil around here. But of course, there's a limit to how deep you can go. Um, then you can start putting in additional supports. You can put in ground anchors, for example. They will even pull the wall back. They can actually be tensioned and help to reduce uh, the, uh, the deflection in the wall. Or you can internally, uh, because there are restrictions on this going under other people's property, and also there may be a basement here as well, so often you have no alternative but to use struts internally within uh, the basement. These can be temporary or you can use the floor slabs uh, in the building as a, a permanent support as well. So once you add these additional supports then there isn't really any limit on the depth that, that you can go. Uh, it can, you can achieve uh, most basements that you want to uh, by this method by adding additional supports as you go down. So this type of wall is called embedded. 
And it's either supported or it's a cantilever type of wall. Uh, it's very expensive, uh, but in situations like this, it uh, really pays for itself because of the extra uh, floor space that you can create. Okay, that's three types of walls. There is a fourth one, a reinforced soil wall. That's something that Tensar uh, supplies and can do designs for. Um, I'll only cover this briefly. We'd, I'd rather do a, a whole session on this, a whole uh, episode, to hopefully somebody ask about a reinforced soil wall soon. This is where you have quite a thin wall, just like the reinforced concrete one, but um, uh, we will talk about that later. But you have reinforcement going back in this uh, saw like that. Uh, quite uh, economical and uh, easy to construct solution. Uh, that will take a long time to write down reinforced saw wall. Reinforced saw wall often abbreviated to RSW. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll cover that in a future episode. So that's a quick overview of the types of retaining wall. I hope that's answered your question, Sandy. That's all for this episode of Tensar Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.